Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for WealthPress. Today's Thursday, it's October 6th, and it's a very special day for Uncle Roger. It's my 21st year wedding anniversary. I got, I got hitched 21 years ago today. Happiest guy in the world, best decision I've ever made. Will definitely renew my contract for another year. <laughs> It, folks, I want to appreciate and thank each and every one of you who's been posting comments and uh, questions below this video in the YouTube channel. I really do appreciate it. Our viewership has been going up like a rock, like a rocket, not a rock, like a rocket. And I've been uh, commenting below those videos daily and answering your questions. So please, please, please post a comment, a question below the video in the YouTube channel. It really helps us out and also subscribe to our channel. Let's get into today's session. All right. So as you could see here and and this is actually this is actually a really good point of what i've been trying to say for the last couple of weeks notice market opened up week yesterday right ended up strong overnight session right when we began really strong and then here we are again and this is a pattern that i've been seeing i'm always looking at little patterns and i'm telling you right now as as i sit here the last few weeks this market has not been roiled by the u.s stock market it has been pulled down by global economy that's a very very positive sign that means the u.s market is not dragging us down anymore or at least for now it also solidifies the fact that these small cap stocks can actually withstand some pressure i mean look at these they've they've stayed i mean they made a low they hit this area but they're still within that range so there's still 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 hope for the stock market to bottom out at this area from where i'm sitting the small caps bottomed out in june and remember something and i told you guys this a long time ago this index these small caps they peaked out almost a year before the rest of the market small caps are a lot more speculative and they're holding on as well or better than most right now so keep that in mind now speaking of stocks which is what we do here there's a couple of things we need to pay attention to. There's another stimulus that's coming into the market, and that's earnings, starting with Conagra, Constellation Brands, Levi's. They're all reporting today, I, McCormick as well. I don't know if they're reporting uh, before the opening or after the opening, or may, some may be reporting before the opening and some may be reporting after the closing, but this is the estimate EPS. This is what we're expecting. You may want to write these numbers down or look at it. I'm not really concerned about what they're going to say they're not going to say anything great what i'm concerned with is the forward-looking statements nike came out with some forward-looking statements and they were just god awful they were terrible um so but it seems to be priced into the market so i want to see what this uh brings our plate and then tomorrow you have till rate but today officially well i don't know about officially i don't even know if it's official i think officially earnings season started a couple of weeks back but unofficially the big ones are starting to come now it's already we're getting into the second week of october that's what's on the plate and um as you could see here let me just kind of give you a little taste of that analysts have been trimming their forecasts especially in the retail and communication sectors very impacted and communication has been lagging behind since this thing started as inflation drives up costs and saps consumer spending on everything from food to clothing companies within the broad s p index are expected to notch earnings growth of roughly this would be a great time for you guys to write this down 2.6 percent down from june's projection of 9.5 percent so the fact that they're beaten down so much is already priced into this market in my opinion unless they're worse and i don't think they're going to go from 9.5 to worse than 2.6 and that would be the slowest growth in the third quarter of 20 since 2020 according to fact set technology sector is expecting to have contracted in the third quarter already already priced in a sharp revision from expected growth appliances makers whirlpool target many other companies report even sharper declines but again remember it's already priced in the nasdaq already dropped like 55 60 percent other sectors have boomed uh, makers of household necessities managed to shore up or even increase profit margins some even thrived on inflation to increase profit real estate investment trusts have maintained their generous profit growth i warned you about that about a year ago forecasts have increased for energy companies because of high energy prices and utilities have only recently started to ease so again we are really getting into earnings so that's why i wanted to kind of take a little minute to kind of show you where we are and again just so you know 
we're expecting right now 2.6. That's according to fact set. If we could do better than 2.6, we may start seeing some upside. Now let's talk a little bit about global economy and then I'll talk about some levels. Strong US hiring report. This report right here, the private report that came out yesterday, that's what they're talking about right here. Um, uh, might ease off plans for interest rate hikes in OPEC groups of oil exporters. But again, the big report, that was a private report that came out yesterday. We're having a jobless claims report. They're expecting about 200,000. That's been on par. The big report is this one on Friday. That's the big report. And again, I'm going back and forth because I want to give you some context so you can understand what we're talking about. The consensus is 250,000. I'm hoping that the number will be better, but I'm not putting a lot of money behind it. Unemployment rate, that's really what I'm focused on. And uh, I wouldn't really worry about anything month over month. I would only look at year over year, but the, the target is 250. In my experience, whenever it's this wide, 220 to 340, 40, they just don't know. But this is baked into the market. That's what's expected. So, and again, the number so far looks okay. Uh, payroll processor ADP had employers at 208 jobs in September. That's the private report. That showed parts of the economy are still strong, giving ammunition to Fed officials who say more rate hikes are needed. And yes, they are probably going to raise rates three quarters of a point. They're not going to cool off. There's no reason to. Investors, um, investors hope the data show that economy weakened will persuade the Fed and banks in Europe and Asia to ease off rate hikes. Not a chance. The worry... They worry aggressive action to cool inflation might tip the global economy into a recession. But forecasters say hope central banks will relent might be premature, way premature. Wall Street is waiting for corporate no numbers. That's what now we, we have that in play. And last time we had co corporate numbers, they came out better than expected. And again, we're having an unemployment update on Friday. That's this report that I'm talking about now. Again, I'm going back and forth because I wanted to kind of show you where we stand. Oil surged to above $110 per barrel following Russia's February attack on Ukraine has fallen back. The decision to support price might help Moscow maintain its income, which they desperately need right now. Once Europeans' decision to cut purchases of Russian crude as punishment for war on Ukraine takes effect in December. Folks, till we are out of this war, until inflation is behind us, oil is going to be in play. Now, volatility levels appear to have peaked a few days ago, about actually about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, time it flies. I, uh, we may go a little higher, but I think this is coming off. The big, big problem I'm having is still with the bond market. We're still hovering around these levels. We haven't gotten higher, but we haven't gotten lower, and the slope is nowhere near uh, this type of a slope that we had towards the downside. And so I think we're going to cool off. And it, when I say cool off, I mean cool off on extreme bond drops. I think we're in a here and wait area to see what happens uh, over the near term. I don't think there's going to be a lot of movement on this market till we get some certainty if the Fed is raising rates or not. But I think two thirds, uh, I think 0.75 is already baked into this market. Um, in terms of stocks, you still have to be defensive. Nothing has changed. And I mean nothing. Look, energy, healthcare, utilities, consumer staples. In terms of momentum levels, we're still not really seeing anything to the upside or downside. Markets are still choppy, which is telling us we have substantial upside to go. In terms of indexes, and I'll just use the Dow Jones, and then you can we can extrapolate the levels from there. I was encouraged by what I saw yesterday in terms of the market. What I'm what I want to see right now is the U.S. market brush off negative global news. So if you see markets opening lower, that's because of global news overnight. And then if you see them heading higher intraday, that's very, very bullish. So we wanna track as much as possible what's causing the market to go down, see if it's international, <clears throat> and see if the US market can bring it back. Yesterday was a perfect example of it. We opened up lower, and then we dragged higher as the day went on. Yesterday after hours, we were up about 100 points on the S&P, or excuse me, on the Dow. Uh, and then again, this morning, we're down 150. So it'll be very interesting to see. It'll be very, very interesting to see if we could stay in this range. My biggest factor is for the Dow to stay above the 30,500 level. If we could stay above 30,500 30, level, we would be in good shape. As far as the QQQ, um, I like where we're at right now. I like to see us at the uh, 3,020 level or 3,000 level on the NASDAQ. Uh, 
or 300, excuse me, 300 level on the NASDAQ, the 50-day moving average. I'm trying to extrapolate the SPY and I'm adding a zero, but I'm adding it to the wrong one. And the SPY, I'd like to see at, at 4,000, right around 4,000. That would be a great idea. Or if you're looking at SPY, just subtract the zero, it'd be 400. But again, I'd like to see it at the 50-day moving average because it'll be near the upper end of the range. And I'm noticing that the 200-day and this channel are converting or are going to be touching each other pretty soon, which tells me that we are on the right track because the 200-day would be the next stop after that. Um, in terms of sectors, and I, I told you guys that I think energy, utilities, and consumer staples is what's in play right now. And uh, if energy stays up, we're going to see stronger upside from other sectors. Now, look at energy. It's really coming back up. Consumer staples looks like it's got more to go. In my opinion, in my opinion, what I would suggest right now would be the healthcare sector. I think healthcare has more to go. It doesn't have as much exposure to the downside. And I think it's not as overbought as energies in the near term. XLV looks to be good. If we go to XLV... It's got, I think it's got at least till the 200 day moving average. And uh, you can probably go to December. Yeah, go to December, it's fine. And I would go with the 126, maybe spread the 126 versus the 132. 126 versus 132. That's buying the 126 in December and selling the 132 in december as a spread it would be like three dollars three three fifty dollars wouldn't be a bad spread and uh this this the liquidity we just wait till the market opens and maybe use a limit order because the spreads here are a little wide now folks i've got something important timely and educational for you folks if you want to watch my videos or read my research you likely know that the housing market could be in serious doo-doo and i mean serious trouble in the next couple of months Inflation is out of hand. The Federal Reserve had no choice but to hike rates faster than we've seen in decades. And this hawkish move, it slowed down the economy and pushed us on the brink of a major recession. Folks, the housing market is already seeing price declines in most areas of the U.S. And that's why Jeff Zanineri, my colleague, he's airing a critical briefing right now to help investors prepare for what could be the biggest hit to our economy since the 70s. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something. Every one of us, I have a talent, Lance has a talent, Jeff has a talent. Jeff is really good about the big picture. He's great with the global economy. He was one of the first ones to talk about China. Uh, he's really got, that's, that's his thing. He's got his finger on the pulse. That's his knowledge base. So you would be foolish not to listen to Jeff when it comes to the housing market right now and with the global economy. It's something you need to pay attention to. Uh, it's not all doom and gloom. Smart investors can take action and they could protect themselves or at least gain an edge or maybe protect yourselves. Follow the link below. Learning is power. Education is power. And Jeff is full of education. This housing market is going to be great. House of Cards, you don't want to miss out. Really, really worth watching. Highly, highly recommend you pay attention to it. Because you know what we're going to be saying six months from now? Just what was the same thing Jeff and I were telling you right now about what the Fed was going to do two years ago and how they were going to get into trouble. He and I predicted it two years ago. Follow the link below. Check it out. you got to check it out right now. Jeff has a very urgent message, and you need to hear about it. Now, important, comment below this video in the YouTube channel. Like these videos. Subscribe to these videos. We get more viewership if you guys interact with these videos. I didn't know about this. I'm learning all this now. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye, everyone. Take care. I'll be celebrating my 21st year anniversary today. Oh, yeah. It's like that. Bye.